Thank you for coming. Mr. Popo actually asked us to talk about him, to thank the community and the doctors and uh, Purdue for taking good care of him. So we're here to give you an update on his status. Uh, he's had a long year, uh, but he's managed to cope uh, quite well with what's happened to him. Um, we've been taking care of him over the past year. Uh, he's had a couple surgeries and uh, he's recovered from them, as you can see in the video. And he's, uh, I would say, content with uh, where he is right now. Okay, so when he first came in uh, that night, uh, as you know, we washed out his wounds. We also closed the wounds that we could, and the other wounds that we couldn't, we were able to use local tissue as flaps to cover uh, critical structures. Uh, he was in the ICU for quite some time, and then he, uh, he was managed when he was stable to uh, undergo skin grafting to his face, um, and then, uh, Basically, he underwent local wound care uh, and has been managed as, a, as an outpatient in his facility. He would come to clinic and see us, and we would take care of his wounds. His wounds have closed, and, uh, and from a reconstructive standpoint, uh, we presented him the options for further reconstruction. At this point, he's more than content with how he is and, uh, and is considering those options, but is more uh, likely to to accept how he is now. What are some of the permanent um, things that he's going to have to face? He's blind completely. Tell me about those things. So uh, when uh, he initially came through the emergency room after the initial trauma, uh, one of the the eyeballs or the globe of the eye was missing, but he had another globe, but he couldn't detect any vision or light for that matter. So we were advised by our ophthalmology colleagues to cover the, the globe with some skin and tissue from other parts of the forehead in order to protect the eye, hoping that in time uh, he would resume vision from, from that single remaining eye. Uh, unfortunately, over the course of the last 12 months, there hasn't been any improvement in uh, light or color detection from that eye. Uh, so his vision uh, has completely been lost. Um, other deficits is uh, some of the structural aspects of his nose uh, continue to be uh, missing. Uh, but other than that, uh, he's doing quite well. How's he coping with the loss of vision? Oh, well, he has wonderful care at Purdue. His uh, nurse is with him, assists him in his daily activities. He's managed quite well, he, uh, and she'll be able to give you the details on that. Going back a little bit, you say his wounds, given their experience, Well, he had extensive trauma to his face. It was, uh, it was bad. I mean, and uh, I'm sure you you saw the those uh, that media footage that was out there. Uh, that was accurate. And so uh, we were able to close many of those wounds that were open, um, and then cover the globe, um, and then do secondary reconstruction with grafting to the other areas. When you say Parts of it, parts of it. Uh, there's still work that can be done, uh, but he's more than happy with how he is now. He's quite grateful. Um, and we've presented him with those options, which include using his own tissue to reconstruct his nose, uh, which he's been reluctant to proceed with because, uh, like I said, he's, he's content with uh, how he feels and how his, his life has, you know, how it is now. So we've also talked to him about prosthetics uh, for the uh, for the eyes and the nose, and he's he's uh, at this time not interested in that. Um, and we will do what the patient uh, requests or desires, uh, and we've presented him with all the options. Um, face transplant is not uh, something we think is necessary, as he doesn't truly have any functional deficits, and to put him through a lifetime of immunosuppression is not something that, uh, in our eyes, or neither he nor us think is in his best interest. Um, so we've presented him with the options that we think are best for him, and uh, he's happy with the way uh, he looks now and how he feels, and he's 
coping with his life and his uh, activities of daily living, um, which uh, Dr. Sengel could elaborate on. He had a total of four surgeries, one of which was combined with us and the general trauma service. Uh, so there were four surgeries altogether. We've seen his face so many times. We've heard the story of, of that day and what happened to him. But we know so little about him. Can you tell us about what kind of guy he is? Well, we'll, we'll talk about our clinical interaction. Um, but they'll have more of a day-to-day -to, -day to tell you about. So uh, for us, uh, he's a very pleasant person. Uh, very simple in terms of what he wants out of life uh, and is a pleasure to, to work with. You know. He's a very simple guy. He was a simple guy before this incident and he's a simple guy after this incident. Uh, on many occasions, Dr. Kasser and I saw him basically on a weekly basis and then uh, a few times a month more recently. And we, every time we saw him, we proposed rebuilding his nose using some of his tissues from other parts of the body to reconstruct his nose, rebuild his, his eyes and things of that sort, much like um, the young girl who was profiled in the media recently, Aisha, the Afghani woman, um, who had her nose reconstructed. But Mr. Papa was different than she. He's simple, he's older, he is blind, and so he can't see what he looks like. And furthermore, he, it's not as important how the world sees him. He's happy the way he is. Um, we also talked about non invasive approaches to rebuilding his appearance, such as prosthetics, as Dr. Cassera mentioned, uh, and yet he's not, he's not interested uh, in even a prosthetic nose or a prosthetic eye. Can you describe, I imagine that, that patients like this um, who do have vision, you, you put up a mirror to their face and they can see the progress. Because he does, can you describe how you would explain to him what his face looks like and how he would react to that explanation? Well, he understands that he feels his face. Um, he can feel what's not there, and he has an idea, and, uh, and we explain it to him every time we see him. Um, but again, he's just grateful for the care he's received. His wounds are closed. He's really made tremendous progress. If you look at his, uh, the picture we had the last time we were here together, and now it's, it's a big difference. And he's able to live his life, uh, and he's quite happy. Yeah. And I would say that he's aware of his appearance because initially he was having problem really uh, to present himself out there to let people see him. But now he's comfortable, he's fairly uh, happy. And uh, he does not want anything much more. Well, he had long skills and his functions. I, I, I read that he needed to relearn how to dress. Is that just based on vision or was that well, he doesn't have any motor difficulty, no, okay. whatsoever. He, he, he has developed uh, really some contracture in the hand, but really... That, that's all unrelated to the accident. Right, definitely. Well, that's what I wanted to ask. Aside from the structural issues, and then he's opting not to, to go yeah. further with that reconstruction, is he going to have any sort of long-term respiratory health problems, or what, what are infections that you worry about? You know, medically, is there anything that, that worries you from this point forward? In terms of the result of the trauma? No, I think uh, he's infection free at this point. He's breathing fine. He's, he's doing well. Yeah, he has been doing pretty well. And really, uh, we had him uh, since June uh, at Purdue. He never had any uh, major problem. You, you say he, he's a simple kind of guy, and maybe that's the answer to this question. But is he, what happened to him is traumatic for anyone to even think about. Is he traumatized from this event? Or because he's just, you know, a simple guy? Has he sort of let it all go? Well, normally after such a trauma, I mean, anybody, you're going to have uh, some post-traumatic stress problem, stress disorder. And really that's why he has been seeing the psychologist and the psychiatrist at, uh, at Purdue. And he's uh, fairly um, he's stable now, and he has been doing well. We are very pleased with his progress. Did he ever talk about the incident with you? Well, we try not to do that. Really, no, we do not want to, to bring those things back to him. Uh, he's progressing well, he's, he knows what happened, he's aware of everything, and he's pleased the way he is now. So we really don't need to bring back all those bad memories. As doctors, is it hard for you to see how his face is now and know that he doesn't want to move forward and to look more normal? 
Well, for us as reconstructive surgeons, you always want to uh, accomplish and reconstruct to how they appeared before. I mean, that's always our goal, right? But at the same time, we respect his wishes. Uh, we'll only do what, what he uh, is willing to accept and want. And so we've been very um, uh, good listeners and only doing what he wants done. Uh, but we present him with the options every time we see him. And if at any point he changes his mind, we're more than willing to do it. I mean, Jake Jackson has the capabilities to do all those reconstructive procedures. And we were lucky that he was able to come to a level one trauma center here where we could take immediate care of him. Uh, I mean, when he came in here, he was triaged in the trauma center and we took him to immediately to the operating room. In some places, you don't have that opportunity where you can intervene immediately, take care of his wounds, and provide him with class, you know, top class care. Is Jackson paying the costs for all of his treatment? No, he's funded, but they'll, they can address that for you. You said that he wanted you to speak today about him. Why? Yeah. why? What, did, what did he want to come out of this? Go ahead. Um, I think he wants the world to know that uh, he's not traumatized by this, that he's uh, happy and grateful for all of the staff at Jackson Memorial Hospital, all the staff at uh, the Purdue uh, facility, and uh, that uh, he's a simple guy and he's happy and grateful for uh, being alive after such an incident. Uh, I, I asked him specifically, uh, are you okay with us talking about you? He said yes, and I said why? And he said, well, I think I, I want to thank everybody. And, uh, and so that's why we're here. I think uh, an important ethical uh, issue uh, arises from this. Dr. Kisser and I, over the course of the last 12 months, have proposed reconstructing his nose, rebuilding his orbits and his eyes uh, every time we saw him, basically on a weekly basis. Uh, but then after a few months, after, and he's been very polite throughout everything, he's not interested, but he would do it in such a simple, kind way by saying, yeah, maybe we'll talk about it next time, maybe later, maybe, you know, instead of no, I don't want anything done. I mean, he's just got this special charm about him. And after, it took me a few months to realize that do we want to rebuild his nose and reconstruct his face for us, or do we want to rebuild it? For him, he's not interested. He can't see what he looks like, and it's not important to him what he looks like. So do I want to rebuild his nose, and does Dr. Kassar want to rebuild his eyes for us and for the world, or for him? And the answer is for him, but he doesn't, it's not important to him. He's happy the way he is, and he's content with life, and he's content about um, spending time with the nurses at Purdue, and he's content about uh, listening to the news and hearing how the, the Miami Heat are doing, and uh, make, making friends at his facility and you know having a place to stay and eating great food and working with the physical therapist there and coming seeing us every few weeks so uh, he's happy and he's grateful and we're a year to, a year in the future now and uh, and things are very positive for Mr. Popo. So is his treatment over at this point? Uh, uh, there's other we do manage um, some wounds his nose you know sometimes does have some uh, secretions that we just monitor as you know he's you know, missing a great portion of his nose. And then, you know, we take care of some other uh, skin issues that he has unrelated. He's ready to leave. Uh, well, he's still going through, undergo some therapy, um, and he can Definitely. address Definitely. Yeah, we have our occupational therapist working with, with him, and, uh, and, and he still needs some, some assistance. And, and we have the people from the house uh, uh, for the blind and household blind, and they are working with him also uh, for him to be more independent. And well, same, same question about the guitar. <laughs> is, is that part of the therapy, and, and who gave him the guitar? What's the story behind the guitar? Uh, the guitar was gotten from physical therapy, or recreational. recreational therapy. He played the guitar many years ago. He was in a band, and he hasn't played for 40 years. And he's, it's very good therapy for him. Yeah, I'm sorry, can you repeat that and speak up? I don't think the microphone is picking it up. If you can tell us a little bit about what he plays and that experience like Well, he's just started playing it recently. He played 40 years ago. He was in a band. So we thought to give him something that he liked to kind of help with his therapy. So uh, recreational therapy, got him the guitar, and he's just picking up the chords, starting over, because he can't see. So he's just feeling the chords and starting it all over again. But it's, he really is enjoying it. Tell us a little bit about him. Um, I will tell you from the beginning when he came, he was a very 
private person to start with. He is very pleasant and very respectful to people. However, of course, about the situation that happened, it was traumatic to him, but he never did say anything or mention any negative things about the situation. Other than that, uh, we don't even go towards anything farther than that because he don't, does not mention anything, even with his family, but about himself, he is very private. He mentioned it to me, he tell me everything what happened, but he does not make any blames for the person that did it. The only thing that he always tell me is that I am sure that that man has a bad day that day, but never did say anything bad, never did say anything that is um, something that is uh, trying to blame the person, no. Actually, he told me that he was not really scared because to start with, he was talking to him while he was standing in the street. And then he came towards him and asking him some questions. And all of a sudden, he was just changed to another person and started to struggle with him until he put him to the ground. That is just, you know, it happened like that. They were not fighting at all, but he did not understand. And he was scared when the actual situation happened because he according to him he was very strong say that one more time next. Next. Um, what will happen next the last time that we have an interview with him together with um, Jennifer when we were talking about him that he has been improved he gave me a comment like touching my hands and said, Adolfo, are you trying to send me back to the public and to be mob? I said, no, we are doing this because we want to, s you, you want the public also to know that you are thankful to them. But we are not, that is not our plan. Whenever you are happy, if you want to go back there, that's fine. If you are going to stay here, we are here for you, but we are not saying that you are going back to the public, no. So he can stay there? Well, as it stands right now, you know, Purdue is his family, okay? Uh, you have a nurse, he knows, I mean, he can't see them, but he just, I guess he would distinguish it by the voice, you know, who's there, who's not there. And he feels fine staying in Purdue. He gets every, you know, he's even gained weight, right? He's gained yeah. like almost- He gained 50 pounds. pounds. He's gained 50 pounds since he's, he's been there. So, you know, our care is excellent. and. Uh, you know, he hasn't had any, any regrets. He doesn't mention anything about leaving. And, uh, and another, another question that someone had was about funding. You know, he, he has Medicare and he is qualified for Medicaid. So he is funded within the realms of the service that we can give him and the cost that, uh, you know, that will cover the render in, in the institution. In addition, I think that I believe he has a, uh, fund, okay, or so many dollars, and that, uh, you know, it's, it's still, you know, under his, you know, I guess say, under his management or somebody who's helping him out. But for funding, you know, we, we're covering the cost. What is his day-to-day -day like? I mean, does he kind of roam around with other, um, you know, other people living at the facility? Does he go outside? What, what does he do? Oh. Every day, um, he has his own routine, you know. Uh, Patricia, who is taking care of him almost every day, unless she is off. We still do the dressing every day. Well, from that big one to now, we just monitor it by the, it has some discharges every day, so we have to clean it every day. The face is still have that open area in the nose that we always try to convince him if we can do some kind of repair on it, and he said, what for? You know, I'm, I'm not going anywhere. I am staying here, so why do I have to do that? Can you start with, like, with him every day? Like, what is his routine? Is it getting up, playing guitar, or walking around? Well, he, he goes to physical therapy. Um, he doesn't wander out of his room very often, but he does play the guitar. He's a wonderful person. If 
I couldn't ask for a better patient. He is never negative. I mean, we have our love-hate relationship sometimes, <laughs> you know, because I try to make him do things that, you know, persuade him, you know, we need to do this, we need to do that. But he's wonderful. For somebody that has been through what he has been through, if you would meet him, you would not believe it. He is wonderful. Has he ever been asked to do on a day trip around the beach, get some fresh air, or has he just been at Purdue all the time? Um, he's only been at Purdue or coming to Jackson. I have offered, which I don't think she knows, to have him come home for me with me, like on a holiday, just to extend it, because he's wonderful. He needs to get out, and he has refused. But I'll try again, because he is, you know, he says my face. I said, it doesn't matter to me. My family won't judge you that way. You're a wonderful person. He's got a heart of gold. Does he have relatives, friends, anyone who visits him? Or is um, there are relatives. The sister called him through me because uh, that is his request. If somebody will call him, I have to have them transfer to him. He does not answer his phone at all in the room. So the sister called me in my cell phone, and I will go run to him and give him the cell phone and talk to him, but not at all times. There are times that I have, but every time the sister call, I have to ask him, Mr. Popo, do you, uh, I call him Ronald. Ronald, are you ready to talk to your sister? And then he said, ah, Adolfa, not at this time, maybe next time. The brother call, the other, you know, uh, cousin, the, the family call, but he said he chose not to talk to them at this time. But he talked to his sister. And some other activities that he does in the daily, ta daily um, Activity, Kathy can tell you the occupational therapy because she has, he has been with them for a while while learning to walk with the blind, uh, the, walk, the walker, um, what do you call it, the cane. Um, I'm the occupational therapist that's been working with Mr. Popo. Since he arrived at Purdue, he wasn't able to do a lot for himself. He was afraid, he didn't have he could move, but he really didn't know where things were. He wasn't acclimated to his environment. So a lot of what I did with him was just acclimate him by placing his tray in a certain specific place and saying, okay, Ron, your hot liquids are on your left, your food is in the center, we got him small bowls so that he could pick them up, bring them closer to him, he could feel his way around and know where everything was strategically placed. Of course, this wonderful lady has carried it through and he's doing just great. You set him up, you say, Ron, this is where everything is, and he um, is able to feed himself. He can dress himself as long as you put his clothes right next to him, and usually we'll put shirt on the top, pants on the bottom, and he sort of is organized enough to know that that's the system he has to use. He knows how to find his way to the bathroom. It, First, it was very difficult. We had to help him there. Now he feels his way to the bathroom. You bring him to his front door. He knows where his handle is. He gets right to his bed. He sits down. He could use his remote control. He could turn on his radio. He, he does all of that stuff. And like the doctors had said, he's a very simple man. He meets his own needs. And we meet a lot of the needs that he has, which aren't very much because right. Like you say, we try to get him to do things, and he'll say, no, I don't want to do that, but we always encourage him, and we say, how about tomorrow? Yeah, maybe tomorrow. Maybe tomorrow I'll do it. So he never says no, but he sort of puts you off. And in a he, nice way. Yeah. In a, nice, in a very nice way. <laughs> yes. It's like he's he loves, shaving himself. He loves I've got coffee. Him himself. You know, he loves coffee, and he has coffee every day, oh, morning yes. and in the afternoon. And he loves to listen to the radio. He loves to sleep and stay on his bed. And uh, the Miami Heat. He and the Miami, the Miami Heat. Them. He that's, loves them. He loves the Miami that's Heat. That's his love, the love of his life. Yes. He can't watch them anymore. Mm -hmm. But he listens he, to them. He knows all about mm -hmm. them. Mm -hmm. we, talk about, we talk about things in the news. Like he knows this is coming up. And he's a little, little he's, antsy. He's very a little happy. antsy. OK, I'm going to be honest. But he's wonderful. I mean, if he you see his pictures. Us. Yeah. He trusts us. His birthday picture's over there from Friday. He, he's, he's wonderful. He really is. He's, has like he I said. Has he shown any frustration about suddenly becoming blind? Has he said anything about that? Not really. No. no. Not to a bitter point. Yeah. No. It really, 
not. And, and he's all, when you get him engaged in something, he is such a hard worker and very thought oriented. He, he puts thoughts into things that you just sometimes are amazed. Wow, for a man who all of, all of a sudden was suddenly blind. But he still has his mind, and he uses his mind completely to the, to the nth degree. And he's determined. He's a very smart man, bright, smart man. You talk to him, he talks right back to you. He doesn't hesitate to answer your questions. He can be very humorous and will get you laughing in a heartbeat. So like as we all said, he's a pleasure, pleasure to work with. Are there any specific television programs that he likes to watch? He doesn't put the TV on. He doesn't put the TV on, he'll no. listen to the radio. The radio. And he, mm -hmm. he loves the sports, he loves the heat. Um, Any particular musical channels? Rock and roll. <laughs> he likes rock and roll. <laughs> How much does he weigh? No, he is 156. 156. Uh-huh. Oh yeah, no, he's gained weight. He loves to eat. <laughs> yeah, he was very, very skinny. Very, 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 very little. He's, he's put on a lot of weight but he looks really good, besides being a little heavy. If I could get him to exercise, I'd be a lot more happier. Today. To I'm go for a walk. <laughs> yeah, mm -hmm. it's always tomorrow. Tomorrow, <laughs> Patty. Tomorrow, Patty. But he all, he's very pleasant. I mean, it doesn't matter. I can go in and forget his coffee, or only bring one cup, and he'll say, uh, I only had one cup of coffee today. And I'll go get him another one, but he's very, very pleasant. Some issues, sometimes he's f afraid of failing. Yeah. And he does, he's recently, his hands have been bothering him because he's had an old problem from before. And because he hasn't been out there doing what he used to do, which he did have a job prior to all of this. He used to, to pick up things in the area, pull weeds and do all that stuff. So he used his hands a lot and he was able to stretch out some of his tendons. And what happened is recently, because he hasn't been doing that kind of stuff as much, his hands have been closing. So he has a little bit of fear of his hands closing. So I picked him back up again in occupational therapy and we're working on that and he's grateful to that. But that was one of the fears he expressed to me is his hands closing. Yeah, because he's really liking playing the guitar again. He's really liking that. You'll go in and I've gone in and I'll stop at the door because he'll be on the other bed playing. And he'll stop when I come in because he doesn't want me to hear him yet. He wants me to hear him when he's better. I said, I want to hear the whole process. I've seen the whole process, but he's, he's a wonderful person. You would never believe he's been through what he's been through and has the attitude that he has. And he said no time and time again to the more facial reconstruction. It's, um, do you believe at any point that he's saying no because he's afraid if he finishes everything that he'll be pushed back out? According no. to him, uh, it does not bother him at all. If there is some point in time that the situation that he has, that the nose is partly uh, still open, if it bothers him, maybe he's going to get the surgery. That is what he told me. But as of this time, it is not bothering him. Why is he doing that for? When all the process of the surgery, he's anticipating for pain and about the anesthesia and all these things, he, he chose to have that one at this time, just like that. So just to clarify, he came in at about 150 pounds. He's like over 200 pounds now. Um, the question about uh, Mr. Popo's uh, stay at Purdue, he is fully funded by Medicaid, and he can stay at Purdue indefinitely. Um, just another uh, question that haven't been asked, but I just wanted to bring it to you. We talked to the foundation. They said they have about $100,000 in his account that remains there for his care. Uh, other monies came into him directly. That money is available to him whenever he wants to use it. Uh, Lydia will give you that to you in Spanish. Um, una clarificación que queríamos hacer para empezar es que el señor Popo eh, tiene cobertura de Medicaid. Todos sus eh, gastos médicos están pagados por Medicaid. Eh, una confusión, una pregunta que hicieron sobre el peso de él. él Aproximadamente pesaba 150 libras cuando llegó al hospital y está ahora como en 200 libras. No, 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 esa es una corrección que estamos haciendo. Así que... Medicaid, Medicaid, 
me dediqué. Y no sé si tenían una pregunta sobre el dinero que ha sido donado a la fundación del Jackson Memorial. Eh, tiene alrededor de 100 mil dólares y ese dinero es utilizado para pagar los fondos médicos y, y otro dinero que a, otras donaciones que han entrado es para su uso personal. Eh, no sé si, do we talk about visitors too? Did you mention that? Uh, we didn't mention the visitors. Uh, everyone at Purdue has um, the opportunity to make their own visitors list. Uh, Mr. Papo has that uh, opportunity. He has not put anyone on his visitors list. Uh, in fact, we don't go down there unless we go through Adolfo. She's the doorkeeper. Um, and uh, you know, he allows us to come in. So it is, uh, it is with that, if you ask one warning about visitors, there's no one at this time that I know of on his visitors list. It is strictly up to him as it is any other patient. Mr. Papo is treated, you know, just as any other patient that comes down there. So no family has come to visit him? There's no one on his visitors list that we know. Si cada paciente en la clínica Purdue tiene, puede hacer una lista de visitantes que desean recibir, el señor Popo no tiene a, a ninguna persona en esa lista, pero si él deseara, tiene esa opción. Otra pregunta que hicieron sobre hasta cuán, cuándo, ¿Hasta cuánto tiempo puede quedarse él en, el, en la clínica? Es de manera indefinida. Él se puede quedar cuanto, el tiempo que desee y de ninguna manera lo vamos a forzar a que se, que se vaya. And just for your fact checking, Mr. Papo uh, moved down to Purdue on June 22nd of last year. Okay. We have a great partnership with Lighthouse of the Blind. It's helping and we're going to get them in. The Miami Lighthouse provides vision rehabilitation to people who lose their eyesight. And so the Miami Lighthouse both came to Jackson as well as down to the Purdue facility. We've had 22 sessions with him. And imagine the first session, it would be about building trust, that he would trust the person that came in his room when he couldn't see that person. And then it was giving him hope that because of the Miami Lighthouse and the other people that are helping him, he will have the confidence to be independent. And that's what we teach people in our vision rehabilitation program. So the first session would have been just orienting him to his room and then progressing to now you can leave your bed, you can go out the doorway and think of yourself as being in the middle of a clock. And if you go to 10 o'clock, you'll be at the occupational therapist station. And if you go at two o'clock, you'll find your way to the cafeteria. And that's how we begin with orientation and mobility, getting him adjusted to using the cane. We often say that a cane is an obstacle finder, and a guide dog that I have is an obstacle avoider. At the Miami Lighthouse, we even teach the totally blind how to be great musicians. Jose Feliciano, my dream for Mr. Papo is that Someday he will be playing with the greatest friend Miami Lighthouse has, and the blind musician Jose Feliciano. And I think he's going to have the confidence to be able to do that. It just might take a little while. How is he coping? What does he tell you? Is he frustrated or is he, he seems to be very taken in stride? I am not his um, professional therapist. I sometimes say I'm just the blind bean counter at the Miami Lighthouse. I am the president of Miami Lighthouse, but I did speak with Grace, who is the case manager, as well as the specialists that have met with him. He is very intelligent. You know, he wants to talk about the Bulgarian theorem. I can hardly pronounce it. He likes geometry. He likes mathematics. He is super smart. And I believe that with the confidence and a little bit more trust, he can do so much more. We like to say at the Miami Lighthouse, it's possible to see without sight, and I think he's learning that. So the case manager speak a little bit about, about what he said to you as far as, you know, is he going to be okay? And she could speak both in English and Spanish, okay? Um, I met Mr. Popo, I was the first one to see him when he was at the intensive care. Uh, he is positive, at this time he's positive about his life. He's very positive about what he's doing, what he's learned. Um, right now, 
the guitar is is a new a new thing for him, something that he's excited about. His life is very different, needless to say, from what it used to be. I would say that at this point, he is at least content, if not completely happy. He's, he's content with his life. He's looking forward to things. He enjoys the radio. He enjoys, so his life is pleasant, to say the least. He, he's, he's positive about it because he's enjoying every day new challenges. Um, he still has orientation and mobility that we send, and needless to say, he has new goals. Every week, he walks a little bit further, he explores a new area, and he's very positive about it. He cooperates a lot. He likes his uh, orientation and mobility instructor. He's made great strides, great. He really has. It's been a year of a lot of different experiences for him, a lot of learning, and he's come through. He, he should be very proud of himself. Cuando llega the Mr. Popo, las heridas uh, profundo fue profundo y uh, muy seria uh, y necesitamos hacer cirugía con, como una emergencia para reparar las heridas y cubrir el ojo uh, y nosotros usamos el tejido uh, del cuero caballudo y, um, y después uh, cirugías más con los doctores del uh, uh, Optomolo optomológicos Optomolo Optomología. Optomología que ayuda con nosotros también para cubrir el ojo y nosotros después hacer uh, más, alto. Uh, más cirugía de usar el piel de, de, uh, de la otra parte de, uh, cuerpo. del cuerpo para cubrir las heridas. Y él visita a nosotros cada semana y después cada mes para chequear las heridas y ahora está muchísimo mejor. Pero hay otras cirugías que podemos hacer para hacer reconstrucción. Pero ahora él está contento y no quiere hacer más cirugías uh, porque um, las heridas más o menos está cerrado y está feliz con la resulta. ¿Y cuál, cuál ha sido su experiencia con, con el señor Coco? En nuestra experiencia. Um, nunca encontramos uh, una paciente uh, como señor Popo. Él tiene un uh, problema muy diferente como todos los otros pacientes que, que llegue aquí a Jackson Memorial Hospital. Um, pero después de un año, eh, encontramos señor Popo cada semana y um, hacemos dos cirugías que uh, dice Dr. Casera y um, ya do, 12 semanas pasado, uh, él es mucho mejor. ¿Y cuál es su actitud como paciente? ¿Es un paciente fácil trabajar con él? ¿Es positivo? ¿Cómo lo describe como paciente? Sí, él, él es muy positivo. Es un hombre que es muy simple. Um, él, él no tiene muchas preguntas de qué hace un año pasado. Um, el, que, que es importante al señor Popo es cosas que es muy simple y él no quiere uh, una gran cirugía para reconstruir la nariz o para reparar los ojos uh, él no quiere nada él, Sí, no, él, él no tiene difícil para respirar, él no tiene, ya no tiene infección. Él tiene más o menos es perfecto eh, eh, de, de problemas médicos. Él tiene dos problemas médicos, una condición simple de la piel y un poquito cicatriz de la mano, de la, de la, de la mano. pero esas es cosas que la mano, la, la mano, pero esos es problemas uh, que su abuelo tiene también. Y esos problemas que él tiene antes de el accidente un año pasado. ¿Qué más como doctores ustedes podrían hacerle, hacerle a este paciente para que luzca lo más natural o lo más, más posible sin embargo? 
Sí. Podemos usar el tejido de él de la otra parte para hacer reconstrucción de la nariz. Ok, también podemos usar parte del hueso de las costillas y parte del piel del brazo para hacer la reconstrucción de la nariz. Otra opción es para usar prosthetic de, la, de los ojos y de la nariz si no quiere una reconstrucción más larga. Pero en la opinión de él, no necesita y está feliz con la resulta. Se sabía que uno de los ojos lo había perdido, pero el otro podía ver. Si ustedes operan el ojo, los dos los perdió. No, uh, no tiene la vista. De ninguno. Uh, no, estamos operando un año para ver, porque nosotros uh, uh, tenemos uh, esperanza que puede regresar la vista, pero uh, el, uh, el doctor oftalmología. Uh, Oftalmólogo, uh, ellos hacen muchas pruebas para chequear y ahora no tiene visión en, es, en, la ojo, en el ojo. Es, es una uh, buena uh, pregunta de ética. Uh, ¿Queremos hacer la cirugía por el señor Popo o queremos hacer la cirugía para nosotros o ustedes o uh, el público? Uh, uh, no es importante, uh, importante al señor Popo para hacer esas cirugías. Es un hombre que es muy simple. ¿Qué les dice? Él, él, sí, él, él dice, sí, quizás en el futuro, quizás. Ahora no, no ahora él no quiere. Pero, um, you know, en nuestra society es, es un poquito diferente. Hay, tú caminas por la calle con un hombre que no quiere, que no tiene un brazo o no tiene una pierna. No es algo, algo grande, pero tú caminas por la calle y, y encuentras un hombre que no tiene un nariz, es un poquito diferente. Hay uh, un mucho énfasis um, en, en, en la cama, en, y, cara. en la cara. Y cuando hay una persona que no tiene una nariz o no tiene un ojo, es diferente como una persona que no tiene un brazo o una pierna. Sí, él puede sentir con la mano y sabe que no tiene nariz y no tiene un ojo en este lado, uh, pero él acepta este. La vida de él es muy simple. ¿Entiendes? Usualmente él está en su cuarto, ¿entiendes? Eh, tiene un cuarto que es semi privado, semi privado, ¿ok? Pero en este momento, por el mero hecho de la importancia y para, pues, hay que, pienso yo, para poder prohibir, prohibir, no, para que no tenga eh, ningún tipo de potencial de infección, se ha mantenido en el cuarto solo. En el, las enfermeras son usualmente las que más están con él, las que le dan la medicina, las que le llevan eh, el, el diario de, de todas sus actividades. ¿entiendes? Él, adentro de la facilidad, él va a terapia eh, ocupe, eh, ocupacional, ¿entiendes? que fue la, la terapista que estaba aquí. ¿entiendes? Se lleva al Jackson ¿Entiende? Y esas son las salidas más grandes que él tiene. ¿Entiende? La nutricionista, ¿tien? ¿sabe? Es la que le lleva la, la comida y la dieta. ¿Entiende? Como se había dicho, él ha aumentado unas cuantas libritas. ¿Entiende? Que está ahí. Eso es mero hecho de que él está contento y sabroso porque entonces es uno de los uno de los buenos eh, indicadores. ¿Entiende? Eh, ¿Qué él hacer? ¿Qué es lo que le gusta hacer? Hablo, nos hablaron de la guitarra, de la Sí, pobre. bueno. Aparentemente, ¿no entiende? Él le gusta la música, porque le gusta tocar guitarra, ¿ok? Eh, ¿Cómo se llama esto? No lo toco muy bien, pero eh, tú sabes, está aprendiendo y está mejorando, ¿ok? Eh, oye el radio, ¿no oye la televisión, aunque no le interesa mucho la televisión, porque en ver o hecho no puede verla, ¿no? ¿Ok? Eh, pero es bastante limitado y es una persona muy llana, ¿no muy simple. Él no pregunta por mucho, ni pide por mucho, 
¿Entiendes? Está contento con lo que tiene, agradecido por el servicio que se le ha dado. ¿Entiendes? No, no sé, es una persona tranquila. No es revoltoso, combativo, agresivo. Eh, ¿Entiendes? Eh, con... mejor nos puede explicar el mensaje que él quería que se diera hoy, de que él está agradecido y que por la ayuda y por toda la gente que, que tenía, o sea, oro, oro por él, tenía buenos sentimientos por él. ¿Quién nos puede mejor decir eso? El mensaje que él sabía que estamos hablando de él hoy y qué es lo que él quería salir a decir. Bueno, yo creo que el mensaje viene de todos nosotros, ¿entiendes? De lo, los mismos médicos, los terapistas, yo como trabajador social, la administración, ¿entiendes? En que hemos puesto la mejor mano posible para que el Señor se recupere y se sienta como en su casa, ¿me entiendes? Y una de las, de, de las indicaciones, esa es, como lo repito y lo vuelvo a decir otra vez, eh, lo bien que él está porque ha subido de peso, ¿me entiendes? Y usted lo sabe, cuando uno se sienta tranquilo, sabroso, en paz, pues tiene la tendencia a comer y a estar alegre. Parece que está muy bien y por eso él no quiere irse, no quiere salir de, de los porque él ha sido un desamparado, entonces ahora se sí, está Definitivamente fue un desemparado, pero en este lugar ha, ha sido acogido con mucha eh, alegría y, y tranquilidad y, y placer y no hay ninguna indicación de él que él se quiera ir. Además, el centro de nosotros es rehabilitación y al mismo tiempo es un nursing home y un eh, 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 cuidado a largo tiempo, donde, donde tenemos personas que por un mero ocho no pueden cuidarse en la casa, ¿entiendes? Y están en, en nuestro centro, ¿entiendes? Y él, en estos momentos, yo creo que el pensar de él, aunque no lo haya verbalizado, ¿entiendes? Es de estar en Perú porque se siente bien y tranquilo. ¿Su familia, algunos familiares lo llaman? Bueno, como había dicho antes la enfermera Adolfa, que es la, que, la jefa de la sala, ¿Entiendes? Eh, lo llaman los familiares a través de ella, ¿entiendes? Y entonces se le transfiere el, la, la llamada a él, ¿entiendes? Él tiene una lista de personas que él quiera ver, ¿entiendes? Y que él pues, acepta para ver, ¿entiendes? Y, ¿entiendes? Y así es como se ha tratado el caso hasta ahora. Quisiera hacerle una observación a su pregunta. Cuando usted preguntó sobre cuál es el mensaje de Mr. Popo, yo sé el mensaje. Exacto. El mensaje que él. Ok. Ok. El mensaje que él tiene en referido en lo que se trata del programa nuestro, es que cualquier persona que pierde la visión de pronto, inmediatamente tiene un ajuste. Y ese ajuste va a durar por lo menos un año, si no dura más. Eh, Miami Lighthouse, hemos estado ahí con él desde el principio, lo hemos ayudado en ese proceso. Él aprecia las visitas que nosotros le damos porque le damos confianza, le damos un porvenir, le ofrecemos un futuro y en su ajuste a de pronto ser ciego, que es algo, se, su mundo cambió completamente. Nosotros somos la parte que, como dijo eh, Virginia, le damos esperanza, le damos confianza, le damos un futuro y el, el lema de nosotros es que se puede ver, aunque no aunque no, no tenga una visión. Es el mensaje que le llevamos. Él agradece ese mensaje. Él se lo agradece a la Orientation and Mobility Instructor, que, la, que lo visita. Hemos tenido también mmm, manejo personal, que se le da otro instructor. O sea, cuando yo le mando los diferentes instructores, él está muy agradecido, porque ya le digo, no solo porque lo caminamos, lo ayudamos a caminar y eso, pero porque le damos esperanza, porque él sabe lo que, es, lo que hacemos y él sabe los resultados. Los comentarios que es un hombre inteligente, que sí. responde muy bien. ¿Puede comentar sobre eso en la parte de haber perdido la vista? ¿Cómo eso ayuda? Eso ayuda. Ayuda porque, porque sí, porque él es un hombre inteligente, es un hombre que tiene cierta educación. O sea que las cosas le vienen rápido, o sea, él comprende lo que, él no es uno de muchas palabras, pero se ve 
claro, en su entrenamiento, los instructores se dan cuenta que es un hombre inteligente, eso porque tiene que aprender. A él se le ha enseñado cómo caminar en cierta forma, cómo, cómo tratar de protegerse para no caerse, y es un proceso que él ha logrado bastante rápido. So, ¿Han sí. visto el lema de ustedes en el Sí. Repíteme este lema y por qué. Que se puede ver aunque no tenga una visión. 